Hi, I'm Professor Rodney Van Meter from the Keio University Shonan Fujisawa campus. Welcome to my operating systems class. What is an operating system? Well, you've probably used Windows or Mac OS or iOS or Android. All of those are operating systems along with desktop variants such as Linux and FreeBSD. But what really is an operating system? Well, let me start from two basic physical principles. Everything is distributed and everything is concurrent. Now what does distributed mean? You should know already that a computer is composed of parts like a CPU and memory and disk drives and it's also connected across a network, probably to other machines within your organization, probably to other machines elsewhere on the internet, which, by the way, is not the only computer network, but it's certainly the most prominent example these days. So, there are physical parts of the computer system, and they are divided in different physical places. The CPU is some distance from the memory, and the memory is some distance from the disk drive. And each one of those is an active component in your computer system. So they're all acting at the same time. That same time. That's what concurrency is. So everything is concurrent and everything is physically distributed. One of the results or one of the implications of that is that it's never possible for you to know the exact current state of your entire computer system. You're writing some program and it's running on your CPU, well, you know, it's impossible for you to know exactly what's going on in another computer on the other side of the planet at the same instant. So if you're connecting via a web browser to some server in California when you're in Japan, it's impossible to know what's going on over there. That seems pretty obvious, but it's actually also impossible to know exactly what's going on at this exact instant inside your disk drive or even inside another core inside your CPU. So everything is distributed physically and everything is concurrent. Now those late, the latency of information is one of the key factors we're trying to, to convey here. That latency of information, 30 centimeters per nanosecond. That's the speed of light. There's a famous computer scientist, Grace Hopper, she used to actually carry around with her 30 centimeter long pieces of ethernet cable and say, hi, here's a nanosecond, and she would give them to people. One of my friends, Daryl, has, has one of these that was given to him by her. So that nature of information being delayed by the transmission time results in us always operating on information that's out of date. You might recognize this idea of everything being distributed and everything being concurrent and information being delayed if you've studied physics. Einstein's special relativity builds on this. It's a concept he called the light cone. So if we take light in just one dimension for a moment, I'm imagining only an x-axis, not x, y, and z for, for our special dimensions. We can draw a diagram where space is on the horizontal axis and time is on the vertical axis, and then you draw two lines at 45 degree angles, and those represent the speed of light as you're moving through a space. Now what this means is that if you have an event at a point in time and space that you call, that you label A, and another one that is at a point in time and space labeled B. If B is outside the light cone of A, then B cannot be influenced by, by the event A. So maybe A is clicking a button and B is sending you some web page or something. Well, the computer that you're connecting to can't send you that web page until after it gets the information about that click. If that information 
information, that click might be event A, and then that information about it propagates at only the speed of light, after which it's received by the machine at the far end, which can then process it and send it back. So if B depends on A, then B must be inside A's light cone. That's the principle of information and special relativity, and it influences the structure of computer systems, both hardware and software, in ways that we'll talk about through the course of this semester.